Sit down. We have to talk. What is it? There's an important detail that we forgot to attend to. We need birthdays. Oh, no, thank you. This guy I saw at a restaurant had a birthday. They set his food on fire and then blew on it. <laughs> well, nevertheless, we have to have them. And we have to know how old we are. For some reason, we're expected to act our age. And we don't even know what that is. How are we supposed to figure it out? Well, we're smart. Well, guess. How old would you say I am? I'm going to say 35. <laughs> <laughs> So funny. That is actor John Lithgow on Third Rock from the Sun portraying an alien in human form, Professor Dick Solomon. Love that show. Yeah. This year marks the 25th anniversary of the sitcom that earned him three Emmys. The stage and screen veteran is also known for playing Winston Churchill on The Crown and other important figures in history. Roger Ailes comes to mind. Mankind. Now Lithgow is reprising his iconic so portrayal of serial killer Arthur machine. Mitchell on Dexter for the upcoming special series, Dexter New Blood. It premieres next month on Showtime, which of course is a division of Viacom CBS. And John Lithgow joins us now. John, good morning. Great to be good morning. here. Good uh, morning. It feels wrong to say you're very convincing as a serial killer, but you are. <laughs> but you are. I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> what was it like to step back into this character after 10 years? Wonderful. Just great to see them again. You wouldn't think so, but, but uh, doing a serial killer on Dexter was really, really fun. Why? How do you even great prepare to... for something like that? <laughs> Since it's so foreign, I know it's called acting. I know it's called well, acting, but what do you do? The good news is the writers prepare for you. Uh -huh. they, they, and I was hired last minute, you know. Uh, actually, I ran into an actor who had been offered the role before I had uh, a month ago. I won't tell you who it was. Give us initials. No, no, no. <laughs> not going to trick it out of me. Uh, but it, it, was a, it was a brilliant show. And Michael C. Hall is a wonderful actor Plays to work Dexter. with. Yeah. It's great to see him again. Uh, Third Rock from the Sun is also a brilliant show. I just I have... lit up when I saw a little bit you of that. Did, yeah. It, it always makes I know. We happen. were watching you watch you. Yeah. yeah. And I you think, could tell that it fills you up. You I think tell. I'm hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what is it like when you think back to that show? Did you know at the time it was going to be a show that 25 years later we'd still be talking about? It? You never know. Uh, you're always just throwing it out there. But we were having so much fun. I, I, I honestly think I'll live an extra 10 years fueled by all that laughter. Wow. We just laughed all the time. That Would you consider like a, a reboot? Re a rebut? Would you consider a reboot? <laughs> Since it, you, you enjoyed it so much? I don't know. I'm a little old for it. It was... It was... John, what's old? Come on now. <laughs> you don't age. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Aw, oh, shucks, you guys. Now, <laughs> you were a presenter um, at the Tony Awards, and mm -hmm. you're a Tony Award winner yourself. What, what was it like to celebrate Broadway again? Well, it was a fantastic evening. Everybody there felt that way. And I got to present the award to Danny Burstein, very dear friend of mine who'd been nominated seven times, and he finally won. It was, it was a great evening. Yeah, Broadway in New York, I mean, it's synonymous. Yeah. Um, uh, and you light up when you talk about the art and the craft of being an actor. Mm -hmm. um, what is your message to everybody that are back on stage here in New York? Well, Theater survives. Uh, I mean, it, it, the enthusiasm with which everybody's going back to the theater now just shows you how, how starved we've been of not just, not just theater, but all of the arts. So much of the arts is a communal experience. Yes. And, you know, pandemic has taken away communal experiences. Well, you're also sitting here as a best-selling author. May I hold up your book? Of course. All right. His latest book is called A, Confeder a Confederacy of Dumpties. I like that title. Uh, portraits of American Scoundrels in Verse, and you actually name names and take numbers in this book. What? what, what go ahead. No, no. What, what, what is your attraction to scoundrels? And we should also point out, you did the illustrations, which yes. I thought was also a, a new thing for you. Well, this has been a sort of white-hot political era these yes. last few yes. years, and I have very strong convictions and responses to politics, but I'm much more an entertainer than a pundit, so I found my way of... Uh, satire was my way of being both an entertainer and expressing you, myself. You, you do engage in one bit of historical punditry, which I think is important to note here. Uh, you refer to fictions that become facts as they age. Is that a general rule you find like from that. history? You know, history is very, very tricky that way. Thank God for historians. And I tip and my you're hat. Married to you're married, yeah. married yeah. to one. Yeah. My wife, like Mary, who yeah. was very much uh, an inspiration for creating this book. Look at 
contemporary politics from the point of view of what's happened over the last 200 years. It's been going back and finding these extraordinary characters painted in bold strokes, just like the people we've been living with for the last few yeah. years. You, you say, yeah. John, that fun is the best antidote to ulcerous rage. That's yeah. right. That's right. It is. Well, it's better to respond with satire than with, for example, storming the Capitol. That's right. John, let's go. Thank John. you. Very You're good. the best. We'll be right back. Very good point.